some of you may be thinking, who on earth would write a paper on integrity? I ask you. I mean, that's a bit like having uh, somebody who produces a film called Young, Dashing and Modest. Well, um, this is how I looked 40 years ago when I was last in Cambridge. <laughs> and you'll have to admit I was at least young. <laughs> Now to the serious uh, content. What are we going to do this morning? Very briefly and at some speed, I'm going to uh, tease out for you why I agreed to write this paper. How many ticklish and intriguing issues, which frankly with uh, many weeks and months of uh, discussion and thought, I haven't really uh, resolved in any final way. I'm then going to summarize the paper uh, in case some of you have just blown in off the street uh, or to refresh the memories of those who've already had a chance to look at it. And then I'm going to give you warning now that at the very end, after about 20 minutes or so, I'm going to ask you to turn to a neighbor in groups of two or three, and in the light of what you've heard or of your experience of life, I'm going to invite you to share very briefly, a couple of minutes and no more, the very best or the very worst example in your experience of integrity in public life or even in private life. And then we might discuss all of that and uh, see where we go in some comments and questions at the end. So that's uh, roughly where we're going. Uh, may I just reveal my prejudices? Uh, I think you can tell that I'm white and male, uh, probably middle class. Um, I am um, from a public sector, charitable sector, uncharitable sector background. Uh, I am um, very much from a sort of management and leadership angle. Uh, I identify as a Christian, and I will bring some perspectives from there. Uh, you need to know all of these things because it shapes the way that I present it and you'll need to uh, adjust your um, approach to these things as we go along. So that's a little bit about me. By the way, appearances can be deceiving. Uh, you may not know that my first language is Thai. I was brought up in Bangkok. Uh, I've lived in Aden, Ethiopia, Somalia. I've spoken Amharic, various other languages. You think I'm just an idiotic white male, but actually life is always more complicated than that for you, me, and everyone else. We all bring a much richer agenda uh, than sometimes uh, appears just by looking at somebody. Okay, what are the key issues that um, intrigue? And um, uh, why has this been a ticklish issue? If you look at all of these um, uh, images here for a moment, most human beings, if they're in a trusting and um, warm environment, uh, particularly if any of you here are pastors or medics, uh, will admit to a whole range of rather unpleasant uh, activities. You know, I cheated in my exam, um, uh, sexual misdemeanors, uh, laziness and, um, uh, you know, whatever the, the, the sort of issues around uh, obesity and drink and, and so on. So many people will admit to these things. I have never heard anyone say, I am a person of no integrity. I spoke to a GP friend of mine who's retired recently, 300,000 consultations. He said he's had everything admitted to him during those consultations. Never has anybody said, I'm a person of no integrity. I find that intriguing. What do you make of that? Now some examples. This is the uh, England-India test match uh, that's finished this summer. And um, the Indian team just been smacked by England's greatest ever batsman, Alistair Cook, who just scored 147 runs, uh, destroyed them in this, uh, uh, in this match. And every single member of the Indian team went from all over the ground and shook his hand. Is that integrity or is that just sportsmanship? Indeed, is integrity something that you can detect from a single action or does it require repeated uh, and consistent behavior? Um, do you remember this incident? Uh, now the late um, uh, John McCain, 08 campaign for president. He's fighting all out to become president of the United States, does his pitch, lots of hurrah, and then this woman takes the microphone in the Q&A. And she starts very gently uh, abusing um, Hussein Obama and alleging that he's an Arab. And McCain moves very swiftly across the stage and reaches over, as you can see in that image, and takes the microphone off her and very politely says to her, that is simply not the case. He is an utterly decent man. I completely disagree with him. That's on political grounds, not on personal grounds. Now, he will have won no votes or thanks in that audience for behaving in that way. Is that integrity or is that just uh, fairness? 
any of you spellbound by the um, incident filmed on TV? We were trying to have a holiday in Sicily at the time. We couldn't take our eyes off the television. Absolutely gobsmacking testimony. So is one of these people a credible Me Too victim? Uh, or is the other one facing an unprecedented political hit? Uh, how do you decide on that? And what do you make of the fact that so much truth today is determined by a particular color, red, blue, uh, black, white, and there can be such divisions that seem to be entirely led, not by the facts, but by the stakeholders there. Integrity seeming to be weaponized in order to bludgeon truth to the point where most of us find it very hard to know uh, where truth lies. If you think this is all a bit remote, I've spent far too many years in that council chamber listening to complex debates, sometimes surprisingly sophisticated debates by our elected representatives on some of the most complex issues facing British society today. I spent hours and hours sitting there listening because uh, as a paid official I'm not allowed to talk uh, and our, our masters and uh, political leaders, they do the discussion. I can tell you, and so can a few other people, before the vote, before there's any discussion, what the vote will be. Irrespective of what is raised, irrespective of the merits of the argument, and that vote will be determined. If I can't know that vote in advance, there's something really gone wrong. And that vote will be determined by six people in the city, something like that, who control the cabinet, who control the political group, who control the one billion pounds a year that we spend in the city. And that's got nothing to do with the debate. It's to do with what's required by the color of the political party. And then on to um, ethnicity, you'll remember this, the trial of the century. Two people had their throats slit, only one suspect. Uh, that person was chased out of the murder scene by a helicopter who followed the, uh, p the flight from the scene and uh, the trial that then took place ended in an innocent uh, verdict and the popular view of that was a massive minority, it was still a minority, of black people felt he was innocent and a massive majority of white people felt he was guilty. How can there be such a disparity is that prejudice against black people or is that revenge against white people? Another example, a few weeks ago, a woman uh, walked up in our church setting uh, with a tiny baby to be baptized and she was asked to explain why she was doing that. No Christian background at all, no particular interest in faith. She had just um, gone into labor and was told by the doctors there was very little chance of either her or the baby surviving. I don't know what the uh, circumstances were. <clears throat> and she cried out to God and said, the only thing I want from you, if you exist, is that you should save my baby. As for me, I don't care. I just want you to save my baby. I mean, to, to listening to her testimony was so moving. And so, is that about integrity? Or is that just normal, natural, maternal instinct? What's your uh, thought about that? And um, here's perhaps one more. Can you have integrity around any cause that you wish. So um, my only thing in life is to make America great again. And I'm prepared to do pretty well anything uh, if that destroys socialism, the Democrats, the Washington swamp. There's my integrity. I'm a person of integrity around that. Uh, Venus fighting for all women. This is the cause. Uh, all women against unfair male umpires. Uh, all women except, of course, the one on the other side of the net that she was playing against, uh, but this is the cause, and I can justify whatever I need to do. And uh, Edward Snowden, you'll know, um, arguably the greatest ever uh, leak of government uh, secrets. Uh, all this is done for a cause, which is to defend uh, freedom in America. So is it possible that all of us have integrity? It just is about different in issues, and we just have to accept that we will agree to disagree. And then final curiosity, why is it easier to define what integrity isn't rather than what it is? Why is it so much easier to do that? So this is uh, Montaigne, the man who first invented essays, for all of you who've had to write too many of them. <laughs> and uh, this is a, a, a wonderful phrase to me because I think it captures a great deal of what uh, integrity isn't and therefore at least helps you a little bit about what it is. Is there anything more vile than to be a coward re in regards to men? 
and brave with regard to God. By the way, this guy was a man of letters and intellect, uh, an essayist, as you've heard, a philosopher, and the elected politician in charge of Bordeaux. So he had his feet um, grounded in uh, the real world as well as uh, in essays. And our fear of public discourse, the, our fear of offending, um, our um, withdrawing and, and uh, anxiety about microaggressions that we don't even know we're doing, um, can make us cowards uh, towards men and constantly trying to be men pleasers. So here's my hypothesis, and you'll see what you uh, uh, make of it yourself. My suspicion is that all of us have integrity, every single person. That's why nobody says I'm a person of no integrity. And in a way, you could picture this as a maypole around which you dance. Uh, my thinking around this is that when complex dilemmas come your way thick and fast, you've got to choose now whether to do this or that, to support this person or that person, to denounce this or to affirm that. Most people make a decision. So there must be some ranking mechanism that enables you to say, well, I can see the advantages of that, but I'm still going to do this because it ranks lower in my system. And to me, this is a maypole that you go round and round, each time being tethered, if you like to use that analogy, uh, to your maypole. And so the, me the ranking mechanism, if you have enough time to observe it, uh, betrays what your maypole is. But I need time to see you going around this maypole many times before I uh, really know. Many people are not willing to admit what their um, maypole is, and many people may not even know what it is. It's sort of worked out in life. Uh, but um, s for people such as myself and one or two others in this room who identify as a Christian, a worshipper of Jesus Christ, you should be able to explain at least a little bit uh, what that might mean for somebody with that uh, alleged maypole in their life. So let's now move on to the paper, and uh, we've done some of the key interests, uh, issues that intrigued me and interested me uh, in thinking about um, uh, integrity and how it works out in public life. And here's a very quick run through now of some of the ideas in the paper. I started rather unsuccessfully with some definitions. Uh, Chris and others tried to persuade me to be sharper on this than I ever could be because there are so many definitions. You've got Latin definitions of what the word actually means, integrated and intact. Uh, the great John Stott uh, was talking about the dichotomy between your internal life and your external life, your public and private lives. Uh, um, Polonius, as you know, in Hamlet has this great phrase about being uh, true to your own self. That could be a, an extremely problematic problem, depending on who the self is that we're talking about. Um, and for those who identify with a Christian faith, none of these are really satisfactory because, to my surprise when I uh, looked into the subject, the word integrity isn't a Bible word. There are many words that are translated integrity in English in order to uh, give substance to it. Words like true and holy and good and righteous and upright but it isn't essentially a Bible concept which is uh, of some difficulty to, uh, uh, to me and therefore to get a, a really clear definition. Whatever your view is that in, uh, of integrity and how you see it, um, I've tried to stress how I have found it so difficult to maintain integrity in the fast-moving, complex world of public life and leadership, where, to be frank, I'm now retired, I can be much more um, uh, unguarded than I might otherwise be. Most of what comes onto my desk has been unresolved, unable to be resolved by tier after tier after tier of very large organizations, either because they're so complex, mostly because they're so unpopular and so difficult. Whatever you do, it's a no-win, and the pressure on you to uh, concede your integrity and do the sort of easy thing, the thing that defers it, the thing that doesn't bring out all the unpopularity is, is, is immense. And so I've described this as the sort of scattered self. That's the self when this elephant walks into the room, you want to run away. And so much of leadership is involved in confronting that elephant and not allowing yourself to be scattered. This beautiful piece of um, pottery is in the Leicester Museum in the Picasso collection there, and it, it, it shows these four faces of the scattered self rather beautifully. Bitter envy and selfish ambition, if I had to choose a phrase that has defined my working life, I would use that phrase. The jockeying, the jostling, the uh, <clears throat> desire to get hold of the huge resources that a council 
uh, um, uh, overseas just generates this in the human heart. So uh, maintaining your integrity, whatever you think your maypole is, um, unless you're asleep, you, you have to acknowledge how difficult it is to uh, stay on course. Sexual wandering, have you ever heard of um, Harvey Weinstein? Uh, disrespect for authority. Can you remember the uh, debate around Scottish independence and the abuse, uh, what Mrs. May has gone through or alleged to have gone through in this last week or so? Um, the just general contempt for politicians and people in authority. That uh, is a, a drift against integrity. Defective governance, I'm sure you've heard of Sepp Blatter and FIFA. Um, there's a chap called Philip Green wandering around on a yacht that's worth more than the entire pension fund of all his employees uh, in BHS. Uh, what on earth has been going on in um, Grenfell Tower and, and the management committee there? I mean, these are the people selected by their organizations to be at the very top to guard the integrity and the sustainability of their organizations. And effective governance is, um, believe me, much easier to understand uh, when you're faced with some of the pressures and the dilemmas there. And as for clergy, I hope I'm not abusing too many people here, you've managed to fall down the popularity stakes for integrity below hairdressers. And is that, in uh, is that entirely to be um, a surprise to us when you hear the reports of sort of child abuse uh, that's been around for so long? the ghastly overclaiming of blessings and uh, there's a wonderful book by Kate Bowler who's an academic at Duke Divinity School called Blessed where she visits all 1400 of the mega churches in the states to analyze what's going on there. Beautiful sort of insight into all of that. So do you get a sense of the drift that is against you? This is a current that's running against you and just saying I'm a person of integrity isn't going to do much unless you're aware of some of the pressures against you. Against that uh, set of pressures and drift, uh, people will take refuge in some kind of bulwark, some barrier that's going to help them to maintain themselves. Uh, in my view, all of them are inadequate in themselves. Together, of course, they get stronger. There are laws and regulations. How powerful are they? Uh, what's the percentage of people currently driving using a mobile phone? Anybody not know that's illegal? I think it's about 10% of all cars are a mobile phone. So laws have some effect, but they are reasonably powerless. Um, democratic majority in my world, this is what's right. The people have voted by 52%, and uh, we're never going to let them vote again. This is democracy speaking. Um, of course, we know how to play that card in uh, several different ways. Um, I rather like in my recent years noticing how senior politicians use this phrase. You can fill in the blank afterwards. It is right to abolish this or to do that or to redefine marriage or you know whatever the controversy it, it is right well, what does that mean it's just an assertion of of a sort of democratic majority if there is one and then political correctness can be a ferocious force in um, censoring and limiting and and sometimes uh, minimizing debate and uh, my authority britain's most uh, diverse uh, city uh, uh, inclusiveness and equal opportunities and the diversity of uh, gender and race and so on are hugely important themes. You cannot survive very long uh, unless you uh, can negotiate your way through all of that. But you'll notice that the more inclusive and powerful that doctrine is, the more people who want to climb onto that bandwagon. So in migration terms, there's another wave of migrants. And the previous wave now re resent all the time and attention being given to the new wave. Um, LGBT, do you know that phrase? I bet you don't. It's T Q Q I A A P onto the LGBT and huge offense to a whole lot of other groups that are not on that list. So um, these things all help. Uh, they can help to define um, what we mean by integrity, but they have their weaknesses. And uh, I now want to turn uh, as somebody identifying with the Christian faith to see what this might look like through the lens of scripture and uh, what we've learned through the ages uh, in, 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 those, um, in that tradition of thought. Um, I start with David because he's a rather wonderful example and this must be more about wholeheartedness than it is about faultlessness because this man was a womanizer, endless womanizer, a murderer and a man after God's own heart according to scripture. How do you put those three phrases together? Apparently without too much trouble uh, in, in the scriptures. 
And so I feel rather relieved by that, because if it's faultlessness, you may as well give up now, all of us, uh, and stray uh, and have our weaknesses there. And so I've tried to gather my thoughts around these three themes, moral accountability, uh, relational consistency, and personal discipline. Just a few quick words on each. So moral accountability, that's to ourselves, to others, and uh, of course to God. Um, if you ask me the most difficult issue that I've faced in my working career, without hesitation, I would say discerning right from wrong. The most complex intellectual, political, those issues, there's always brains around the table that can help you with that. But knowing what's right and wrong, which you would think is a kindergarten question, to me, that is the hardest issue. And I'm usually working under immense time pressure, the decision's got to be made now. I've got no time to consult. Millions of pounds depend on it. You can't delay any longer. There's people shouting to do this or that or the other, usually in opposite directions, discerning right from wrong. You have a responsibility in all your life, let alone in public life, to reflect self-critically, to think about these issues and not assume that you're acting correctly. And part of that is your accountability to others. We make it a really a key priority in the decision making that, uh, that we've tried to develop over the years to ensure that every person around the table has had a chance to speak. If in an hour or two's discussion around a complex issue, there's still one or two voices we haven't heard, we'll just say, well, this is where we've arrived, but you know, how about you and how about you? What else could you add? And uh, no matter how contradictory, no matter how different it is, we want to hear all the opinions before we uh, try and reach our conclusions. And that is about respecting and feeling accountable to the uh, entire community and those in authority, not to, you know, it's not difficult to lampoon certain politicians. We do it all the time in the media, but they are our authority and a certain degree of respect is required there. And then for those of you who do come from a, a Christian background, your accountability to God is, I'm afraid, really shattering. Uh, there's passages for those who are familiar with the scriptures in, in uh, the letter to, first letter to the Corinthians about the fact that after you've become a Christian, after you've resolved that issue, you then live out a life, a Christian life, and that Christian life that doesn't determine your status as a Christian, that Christian life gets put through fire at the end of it. And if what you've been doing all through your life is gold, um, uh, silver and precious stones, the fire doesn't destroy it. But if you've spent your whole life building with wood, hay and stubble, the lot gets burnt. That is an accountability that is real and material uh, for those who uh, have that Christian tradition. So moral accountability is firm, it's challenging, it's unnerving, and it's meant to be to guard your scattered self. Then on to relational consistency. Uh, this is much easier, uh, much harder of course, uh, but much easier because it's about loving your neighbors yourself, whatever that may mean. But at least what that must mean is to care about the economic and the social and the environmental uh, needs of your neighbor. So um, you cannot care for your neighbor and take no interest in climate change, polluted seas, depleted biodiversity, poverty, and a whole range of other things, because that materially impacts and undermines the lives of other people. And um, AI, artificial intelligence, uh, this is going to be a burgeoning field of activity. We're going to have to program uh, hardware and software uh, to, to make split-second decisions in driving and so on somebody needs to be thinking about what the values are, the integrity of these systems, and I hope uh, that will become a, a burgeoning area of activity. And for those from a Christian background, it includes even your enemies, those people you really dislike, you really hate. There still needs to be a relationship, a respect, uh, a willingness to listen to those um, voices as well. Now, I mentioned Judah, uh, another hero of mine. You may wonder why all my heroes are such disasters, but it's uh, encouraging to know people's lives are complex. Uh, and we all know that relational consistency with those around us takes years to build. It takes seconds to destroy. And here's the key idea, grace to rebuild. And people need uh, grace. And uh, Judah uh, was a man who uh, sold his half-brother into slavery. He married a pagan. He used prostitutes regularly, got one of them pregnant, uh, ordered the woman to be burnt and then discovered that it was his own daughter-in-law in disguise who wanted to get pregnant. Uh, and the child, Perez, is in Jesus' ancestry. Jesus does not 
um, forbid that to be part of his background. Uh, and he then takes a title, the Lion of Judah. So the grace involved and the forgiveness and the willingness to accept each other's flaws is part of the relational consistency. And then finally, uh, personal discipline. Uh, I don't believe that integrity against the, cr the currents that I've been talking about can cost you nothing it is generally going to cost you something. And if you're not willing to pay that price, uh, your integrity will falter. Uh, tested most uh, typically by very heavy losses, this is going to really damage your interests, uh, or very large prizes. This is going to be great for you if you go down this way. And so there is a need for a certain amount of discipline and uh, iron sharpening iron, helping to mitigate the risks of the uh, scattered self. And if there is no personal discipline, and I say this as a rebuke to um, uh, established churches in particular, uh, there develops this culture of longing to be liked, pining to be positive, uh, and uh, in the end, painting the toenails of the rich in order to please them, rather than engaging and washing the feet of the poor in order to meet the real needs. And uh, don't be um, under any illusion about the seductiveness of being drawn in with the great and the good and being able to pa paint their toenails for them. They're very kind to you when you do. Final conclusions then, tentative as they are, um, is this about harmony around the wisdom of God and God's spirit? Uh, is this about the uh, accountability that I've uh, stressed for those with a, a, a Christian background uh, to Jesus Christ himself? Uh, this is about not being sick, I mean really caring, really caring about what his view is uh, in terms of what you're doing. Enough that it would change your mind rather than to displease him. Marianne Faithful, you may remember, says she's sick and tired of being self-referential. I thought that was a requirement for a pop singer, but there you are. Um, she's sick and tired of it. I don't want to do any more songs that can be accused of being personal. And so I wonder whether in some sense uh, we need to be sick of being self-referential in order that we can be truly Christ-deferential. When unsure of the path to take, what matters to us is that we want to please uh, him. He is our Maypole in that sense. So that's a quick run through of the ideas in the paper. And now over to you to do some hard work. Would you be willing to turn to your neighbor in groups of two or three and in the light of what you've heard, or just um, from your own background, what is the worst or the best example of integrity that you've experienced and why?